Welcome ladies and gentlemen, a Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. What's up y'all, welcome to the Tatness Podcast. For those of you, we're kind of breaking the fourth wall a little bit, pulling the curtain back. For those of you that are just listening, if you want, you can go to the Tatness Podcast YouTube channel and actually watch the video of this. Um... For the first time, mm-hmm. something, you know, for the sake of the documentary I'm trying out and might become a continuous thing. I, sir, am hungover. I'm not going <laughs> to bullshit. Oh, God. It's not good. Um, What'd you do? Well, I don't drink as much as I used to, so, like, when I do now, I feel it, dude. And it sucks. So, I'm feeling it today. Oh, lovely. So, well, you can see you got, told me you got some Gatorade in there, but maybe something else in there? That's none of your damn business. <laughs> <laughs> I, sir, I'm drinking water right now, so I'm a good girl. Wow. Good for you. Real proud of you. Um, congrats on the water. <laughs> oh, trust me, I'll be having a little something-something later on tonight. I mean, happy Thursday. I mean, Friday's usually the day people start partying and drinking, but we don't follow that around here. We just do whatever we want. Fuck your hydration. <laughs> <laughs> So, things have been crazy, man. The filming and shit has been heavy, and it's been, like, it's so much work, and it's just, like, exhausting, really, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, ultimately. And I think it's kind of going without a hitch so far. I mean, I fucked up a couple shots lately. Mm-hmm. Didn't turn my cell phone ringer off, and stupid. And, um, <laughs> I've been helping, and I stupidly deleted a good chunk of filming. Even though we have the audio bites, because we're recording separately to ensure the best sound quality. I stupidly deleted the footage. I felt like an ass, because it was solid piece. <laughs> My bad. This is why you don't let the outsiders touch shit. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, you know, I guess that goes to show anything, like film or art. Anything in life, really, you're going to hit a few bumps along the way to get the final product and get it polished. It happens, man. It it is what it is. I'm never satisfied with fucking anything anyway. I always feel like I didn't touch on something enough or, you know, whatever. And I just feel like I don't want to rip people off uh, and just kind of give them half of, you know, the details or whatever. So it's just getting through that mindset of, like, I still can't believe people give a fuck. So they want to, you know, and... uh, and then you get people like, well, why don't you talk about this? Why don't you talk about that? And it's like, well, people care, you know, like about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so it's just a weird headspace and I got to fucking get over it. But I mean, hey, it is what it is. But it's like, you know, even like you said, doing filming, uh, getting a lot of these stories back and just being able to tell it again. Because I know you've told me a lot of this stuff off camera yeah. and that. And it's like, you know. Heavy anytime because it does open up, you know, old wounds or just that negative thought process. It's, it's quite taxing, you know. Yeah, trust me, it's exhausting. You don't realize it. Like you don't consider that it takes some kind of a toll on you or anything. You just don't think of that until like the end of the day, filming wraps, and you're just so exhausted, and you're just so mentally burnt out, and you don't care about anything. You don't want to do nothing. You don't want to like do what you normally do. It's just like, you just want to fucking go to sleep, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I, it, it's been, a, it's been work, for sure. It has been, but I mean, um, as far as the documentary's going, it's looking great. Um, we've been playing with, um, the DVD menu settings and that. It looks really awesome. I mean, just, it's hard because, you know, when you don't have the final product, you can't see it all how it's really going to be when it's finished. Yeah, there's there's a good team on it. That's all I can say, man. So yeah, I, I'm, it's, I'm impressed with it so far. So far, so Pretty good. Pretty happy with, you know, the production value and whatever. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, I was just, I figured I'd update people mm-hmm. on this. And, uh, you know, people have been asking questions. And, like, you know, I haven't been getting to a lot of messages and shit. Like, people message me and whatever, and I just don't have time. You know what I mean? And, and even if I do, it's like, I got to keep my thought process and my focus on where it needs to be um so i can't be getting into all these weird conversations there's a few people i'll talk to for sure that uh you know but again certain exceptions of course you make time for but um for the most part it's just been you know focus on what you're doing and try to get through this and you know yeah it's like you become obsessed with your work and then like you have to fucking yeah you know (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I mean, because you're always thinking of great ways to make it, a product even better. And, you know, it's like, oh, let's try this. You know, let's try that. Like, let's fuck around with the settings, the lighting, and, or, you know, video settings. Like, what if we time this a little different? Whatever. It's... Yeah, I mean... The wheels are always going, you know? It, it's always something. Like, you're trying to perfect everything, and... You know, it, it's exhausting, honestly. It truly is. Um, but you just want to put out the best possible product for mm -hmm. your fans and whatever. And it's, you know. Um, so, you know, initially, the, the documentary was going to be the first time people saw you on camera. Mm -hmm. But um, now here you go instead. Yeah. So. But not right. everyone's going to see this, you know. Yeah. Um, but. Necessarily. <laughs> I mean. I was always like, oh, video and that. I'm I'm not a big picture person, I'm going to be honest with all you guys. I mean, I hate even taking, like, pictures to update my Facebook or social media. I'm like, ugh, i got to take a picture because, shit, this one's so old and that. Or I get myself looking the way I want to look. I'm just like, I'm just, I'm, I've never been big into taking pictures of myself and that if people do. I just I don't really care for it. i got a face for radio, so fuck it. <laughs> no, well, I don't, don't do videos. Mm -mm. Horrible. No. And it's just, I don't know, I always feel like, you know, I'm not looking at the right spot with a camera and that. It's just weird to me. I mean, some people are natural at it, and it's just like, I don't know, I'm like, oh, where do I look in that? And I feel like I'm going to look silly in that or just, you know. I blame water for that. Come on now. I do. Get drunk and hung over, and then you can wear sunglasses. It don't matter where you look. <laughs> it works for me. Fair enough. You could be looking at something very interesting at the moment, and we'll never tell you guys. Use your imaginations. But, I don't know. That's just the way I've always been, and it's funny, because I'll actually tell you a little story. When I was a kid, uh, my parents actually tried to get me into commercials and modeling and that, so, I mean, unfortunately, it didn't carry over in that. I was, like, way too young and whatnot, and I didn't get the part. It was for some... Uh, advertising for uh, some milk trucks, I think it was. It was something like that, back in the 90s and that. And just... I feel like my parents wanted me to appear on milk cartons, um, but <laughs> not for modeling purpose. Come on now. <laughs> it didn't work, so it was my mom that disappeared. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is what it is. <laughs> so what else is going on in the world with you? work that's it like this is this fucking documentary has kind of been the whole thing and that's why the show kind of you know you got to squeeze it in and you got to do all this crazy shit mm -hmm. and, um it's been fun it's been exhausting it's been you know i don't mean to sound ungrateful for the opportunity or you know whatever it's just it's it does take a toll on you but there's been no time for anything else no not Recently. really I mean, because like you said, you spend the day, you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to get this done and that done and we're going to do this and that. And then you get to it and it's like, I don't have the feeling. I don't have the enthusiasm in that. And you don't want to half-ass anything you That's do. exactly how I feel. You know what I mean? Like sometimes by the time you get all the prep and shit and it's like, can we just not do this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, it's so fucking exhausting. And you got to, it's so hard to get out of the mindset of like, who gives a shit? Because it's like, people care. That's why you, you were asked to do this in the first place. You know what I mean? But it's just, I'm not used to that still. It's been years, and I still just can't wrap my head around fucking people giving a shit about my story and fucking how I became successful and all this shit. Um, but you get used to it. You you, you have to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to come across like you don't appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's just, it's, it's kind of like surreal. So I, I guess is. that's what it is. And I know if filming's been kind of like, we have to work with what we got. Because, you know, we'd love to get some more outdoor footage and shots. But, unfortunately, the weather here hasn't been really cooperating. Like, right now, it's fucking cold and raining out there. And that's not really ideal for filming. And, you know, some locations and that, it's like, you know, because of quarantine, they're slowly starting to open up. But, so, we kind of have to work with what we got, you know. So, a lot of it's been like sit down interview f footage you know q a but you know it is what it is but so far so good but yeah, i'm not letting anybody rush anything if i'm not happy with it uh ultimately i make sure that i have full control and say over everything so 
you know, that control freak aspect we've been talking about that, you know, I have to be hands on. And if I, I don't know if I just don't like what I think I'm seeing or I think we could do better for the fans, then I want my fans to do, you know, get better and do better for them and provide better content. So, yeah. So, of course. So even like, you know, when I help out and film my parts of the documentary, I'm still, like, you know, I always talk to you. I'm like, do you like this? And the crew, like, is this good? You know, I don't want to half-ass anything, you know, myself either. Even in life, let's just face it. When you go through life, in general, never half-ass anything. Like... What's the point? What's the point? Why do something that, you know, you can't be proud of? And, I mean... Guarantee you're gonna wake up every some days and be like, you know, fuck it. I'm not really in the mood in that, but then why bother? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I find that too is like as much as I, I like to be productive and whatever um, and get things done and be efficient, sometimes you really have to just take a day to yourself and not burn out and then come back to it and just be like, all right, I needed that time to just mellow out. Um, get some personal shit done or whatever. So, yeah, or take a you day. Yeah, something like that. I mean, ultimately, you have to, I think, at some point or another. And um, so that's where we're at with that. And it's been hard to kind of think of anything else for the show to talk about because this is life right now for me. So I don't have a whole lot else to talk about, unfortunately, at the moment. It's just, it's been this, all this, you know? Um, what else do you talk about then? Well, <laughs> I know it's not much too, and I know again everyone's kind of all boring and whatnot because of what's all going on in the world right now. But things, I guess, are slowly opening up in that, and you know, you get your excitement because you get your in outside interaction with you know versus the people say at your workplace or in your home. But still, it's like, I mean. I'm just going to throw this out here. I find people are just kind of slowly starting to come out as if it's a hibernation. Like, this whole quarantine's been, like, a hibernation. It almost coincides with, like, the yeah. seasons and that. I mean, I see more liveliness when I go out, too. And I think you've said you've noticed that as well. Like, I don't know, but there's really not a heck of a lot going on. I mean, between, you know, my work gig and this, it's like I've been helping you and you've been just so, you know, focused on this. So, you know. Not much topics to really discuss on the show. No, but. that's what I mean, right? It's like. But, you know, we've both talked and we were like, we got to give some, something to the fans. You know, let, let them know. We're, no, we're not going anywhere anytime soon. You know. Yeah. We're no, still here. It's I'm just. still doing my show, dude. Still doing the show. It's just, you know, attention in that. and just, Right. Just, and time and, you know. Uh, again, a lack of things to talk about, and I don't want my fans to feel like this is all we talk about now, and it's boring, and we already heard this shit, or whatever the fuck. It, it's just updates at this point as to what's happening, and I mean, you know, it's been a stressful fucking time, too, because you get people that volunteer to do some shit, or, you know, say, yeah, I want to be a part of this, and whatever, and then they never fucking have anything to do with the rest of the conversation, and just, like, drop out. And don't even tell you they're not doing it anymore. And it's like, that's frustrating. Oh, God. Um, but what are you going to do? If shit happens in every industry. People will fucking do that. So. Well, yeah, and I get it. People have their lives, you know, and that. I but, don't care. It's like, just say so. You're well, holding up production, and there's more than just me on this. So, like, you're really fucking up a lot of people's time. Well, and, yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that. Like, Courtesy. I think right. a lot of people, like, you know, seem to lack these days is common freaking courtesy. A professionalism. Professionalism. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, you can give the lamest excuse, but... At least it's something. It's something. At least it lets me know you're not doing it. Yeah, you like, know? you know, so you're not sitting there, you know, with your thumb up your ass, like, oh, where, where is this promised material in that? Right, because, like, uh, there's a producer that would potentially be working on this to provide music and shit. And I like to find lesser known people and give them opportunities and give them, you know, a chance to get their work known because I think that what they do deserves some kind of recognition. And this dude, um, I personally reached out to um, fucking March 24th. And uh, he got back to me like two days ago. He never even opened like the, the message or anything and just kind of, fucking 
you know, when it's already said and done, and it's like, all right, move on then. I, I fucking waited like a month, and with no response whatsoever. That's such a dick move. So then I was like, all right, cool. Like, two months go by, basically, damn near. And this guy fucking finally hits me up with, okay, so what did you need? I'm like, nothing now. You know what I'm saying? You blew it. I didn't even open the message, though. I will in two months. <laughs> just to And then prove. tell him I don't fucking need it. Yeah, just to prove a point, but... I just hate that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't mean to be petty, but I fucking well, hate... it's not petty. Like, I, I'm so tired of hearing people say... I've tried everything to be successful, and I've tried everything to get fucking acknowledged and uh, get noticed and, you know, get my foot in the door. And then when somebody comes to you and, like, hands you an opportunity right, you know, on a platter for you, and you fuck it up by ignoring the person for fucking, like, two months, I don't don't get that. I don't either. Like, that's just basically saying... Oh, I don't want that promotion. I don't want that pay raise. But, you know... Um, like, you don't want your shit to kind of become mainstream. Help promote what your your craft that you're passionate you're about. You're telling everybody that's your goal, is to get your fucking music noticed and get, you know, mainstream fucking attention and get a deal and shit like that. I offer you this opportunity and you fucking piss it away without even, like, talking about it. I was going to have this cat on the show and everything else and, like, really get him noticed and... Not anymore, you know? Like, you couldn't even do me the courtesy of saying, hey, you know, I, I'm swamped with work. I got other people that need shit from me, so I'm kind of doing their thing first. Priority sequence. Whatever. Hey, man, I get that. Yeah. I don't mean, you know, I have no intentions of trying to cut in line in front of anybody else. I don't think, you know, that it's cool to pull that I'm a I'm more important card, you know, Yo, you know who I am, fucking do my shit first or whatever. That's a dick move. I don't believe in that. I wait my fucking turn. Just communicate. That's it. Just let me know that you're either busy or like how busy can you be that you can't open a fucking message and be like hey you know i'm kind of swamped right now right i'll get back to you as soon as i can i would be fine with that i would be like okay cool it's better than nothing at least i i know what's up but if you just don't even answer me for fucking two months i have to assume you're not interested you know what i mean and then i move on and i find someone that was like bam quick to do it and just got it done so I don't know. It's just how I am. I personally, I don't like having my time wasted like anybody else. Well, of course, because, like, you know, you you can't get time back no matter what. Like, you can't buy more. You can't sell it. When it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. You know, again, not to be a dick, but that's how I feel about it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm on a fucking time frame here. I don't want this thing to be held up because I chose the wrong person to do business with you know what i mean and now everybody's time gets wasted because one person doesn't give a shit yeah so then why don't i just pick someone else and you know that's ready to go ready to work wants the opportunity wants the credit wants to be acknowledged and noticed and get that recognition that they deserve you know Mm -hmm. try to help people man every time you try to give people opportunities this is what happens you know what i'm saying yeah so i i just kind of got over it i'm like fuck it I'm not trying to help people out like that anymore. Um, The second I feel like they're not serious about it, then I just move on. Yeah. I'll just find somebody that's, like, committed, that's professional, that wants to, you know, kind of make things happen Mm -hmm. and at a reasonable pace or at least communicate and let you know what's up. I don't think that's hard. No. I I don't think that's asking a lot. No. Communicate. Fuck. (laughs) You know? It's not that hard. Exactly. It'll be fine, I swear. (laughs) <laughs> so you know that's the story of that so we'll we won't name the individual of course you know but no no you know i'm sure he knows what he did and it's like you know I mean, it's not like i hate the guy no like, of I course just, not but it's just like really dude i know nothing about the dude it's mm-hmm. just i'm trying to give someone an opportunity and i guess they weren't interested as much as people suggested but you know the thing that sucks i think is like it was a an old brother of mine that uh, kind of recommended this guy. And it's like, I reach out to you, and now it's his reputation you're fucking with because he recommended you. And then this is how you do him like that? Like, I'm not going to hold it against him. No! How the fuck would he know if the guy was going to be reliable or not? He just saw, hey, man, I got friends that could use the opportunity. And here's their Here's one of them. 
Yeah. He mentioned two people. One of them fucking expressed interest. So I hit him up with a message. And I told him that I messaged him. And he was like, you know, cool. All right, cool. You messaged me. I'll, I'll, I'll be get with you. And then he never opened it. Never checked it. till like two months later. The fuck is that? I don't know, man, but I would never do that. And I always try to respond to requests that anyone has for me or even messages, you know, in a timely fashion. You know, maybe at the time I won't get to it and that, but just, you know, um, just be considerate of other people's times. And, you know, yeah. punctuality is a huge thing, like, in right. all aspects. like well, Just communication, dude. Well, yeah. Again, like, I get it. People get busy. I'm not the center of the fucking universe. I don't think because of my successes and things of that nature that anyone should fucking kind of put me ahead of anybody else or anything like that. Like I said, I'll wait my fucking turn. Just communicate. Let me know what's up. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. You know, I wouldn't have even pulled the opportunity. I would have been like, all right, get to it when you can. And in the meantime, I'll, I'll focus on other shit. Yeah. So, the you know what I mean? And get other things done and kind of get ready for your contribution. It's not hard. No, not you at know, all. There's ways around everything. I, I always expect to have to wait a bit, you know. And again, that that's like art, man. And you don't rush art. So, like, what if he did some shit and he wasn't thrilled with it and didn't want his name attached to it? So, it's like, I got to go back to the drawing board, come up with some better shit because mm -hmm. this sucked. This was not, like, to my standards. So, I don't expect it to be for, you know, up to your standards either. Mm -hmm. Let me give you something that I feel is better suited. I could understand that. Yeah. You know? So, but this dude didn't even open the message and then hits me with, so what did you need? Like, I told you in the description mm. what I was looking for. It's like, you don't care at all, do you? So, all right, someone else took care of it. I got a bunch of people. Fuck it. Yeah. There you go. So, I mean. Which ultimately, I think, honestly, sorry to cut you off. No, but, it's okay. Um just while I'm on the thought, that yeah. actually, I think, contributed to a better dynamic to have different artists fucking and producers kind of do their thing. Because mm -hmm. then not everything sounds the same. You know what I'm saying? Because I think, you know, certain producers have, like, a specific style. And so I think that shows in, like, all of their work. So you kind of want that varying styles, you know what I mean, of multiple producers. Yeah. Of, I think that really gives it a cool dynamic. So, just my thoughts. I have to agree with you. You know, a piece, a final piece of work, I feel like with different styles and thought processes, seem to be a lot better. And it just kind of just shows what's out there and other people's thought processes and talents. I mean, I dig it. I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, you know, when you hear about these things, like, say, one person wrote the lyrics and the music for a song, or they yeah. wrote the whole screenplay of a movie, including the script and all that. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's cool, but I mean, I also think about, like, graffiti art and shit like that, where I always love collab work. Oh. Where you get, like, multiple really talented artists with their own unique styles working on a mural together, and you just see all those different styles come together as one giant, you know, story, basically. Yeah. And I love that, and I think that's amazing, and I think musically that's what we're trying to do here is put that in there where it fits, and I think each person brings a different dynamic to the table and, like, a different element that I really dig. So, I don't know. I think it was cool. Yeah, I love those. Like, I feel like it just, it's really just, it's more to substance to it, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, it definitely brings a different... Uh, element to the table like I said it, it's you know it's a different art form entirely when you have collaborators I think so yeah it I mean cool. it's like adding like a little bit of a condiment to a meal or a spice or sauce and that it yeah, just that, adds like that extra like you know missing ingredient yeah right? yeah in, in a way I, I feel that yeah that's pretty good way to describe that it's like when there's like something missing well, and then you find that missing piece. I mean, hell, I had, I actually thought it, you ta told me an interesting combination, and I used this earlier today. I had little chicken bites, and it was ranch dressing and Frank's buffalo sauce. And you're like, oh, try this. It tastes like a buffalo ranch sauce. And my God, I'm like, this was great alone. But then you add this, and it's like, game changer. So, I mean, going to back to the example, it's like, 
that missing thing and it makes something even better. So you're comparing my documentary to Chicken Bites. No! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no! I'm just going back to your point of saying pieces for other people's work, piecing together one final product. It's That's the new sales pitch. Now, when the documentary DVD comes out, get yourself a six-piece. Six-piece, but, you know, <laughs> make sure it's from a good place, like... I mean the documentary, you shithead. You ain't talking about fucking... You literally want to talk about chicken bites, you fuck. They were good, okay? Jesus. But, yeah, Can't I mean... Can't get no good help nowhere these days. But I, I tell you, it's just working on this documentary. has been a lot of fun, and I enjoy the process every day. Even though, like you said, it's draining in ways. I appreciate your contributions, man. Hey, he, everyone's some, contributions, Everybody's, man. for sure. But, like, anyone that had something to say about me and whatever, I, I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day. I've said this before. I'll say it again, man. I appreciate y'all. And uh, thank you for being a part of it. It's kind of been heavy, and it uh, means a lot, man. Some of you... Has some pretty crazy shit to say mm -hmm. that I never saw coming. So it's really cool, and I appreciate y'all. Mm -hmm. It makes somebody feel like a fucking important motherfucker sometimes, you know? <laughs> but you are. You're a cool dude. Oh, man, you guys are too much. Um, it's been a nuts ride, so I'm just enjoying all the success and just kind of, you know. I talk to you about it all the time, how it blows my mind, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just winging it and enjoying it and trying to be, you know, as openly grateful about it as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's been a blast. Absolutely. So, you know, to have the show, to have the business and the career that I've had and, you know, and now all of this and it's just like no sign of stopping and I dig it. So I'm just enjoying the fuck out of it mm -hmm. while I can for as long as I can. I just get my foot in every door that I'm interested in. I never sell myself out. No. You know, and, and whatever. I just do whatever the fuck I am interested in because so, then I'm going to give it my best, you know? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, you just try to appreciate everything. Don't take it for granted. And uh, just really give it 110%. And don't phone it in. Even when you don't have much, you know, to talk about on the show or whatever, you, you try to open the door a little bit and kind of let people see into what's happening and what's going on and give a little insight into your day-to-day -day processes, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, as a fan of anything, I always appreciated that. Like, you know, just having a greater appreciation and understanding for what the hell people go through to produce something. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that. And then there's the fact that... Um, I think anyone that may be interested in doing any kind of shit like that or, or has any curiosities about how the process works is kind of cool for them to see, you know, behind the closed doors what takes place mm -hmm. and, and how stressful it can be and how much is involved in all the moving parts and shit like that because there's so much to it. And, um, fuck, man, I learn something new every day, so. Well... Try to make a point to learn something new every day, right? Oh, yeah, but it just happens so easily, you know, so naturally. It's like every fucking day I'm like, oh, that's how this goes down, and mm -hmm. that's how that works. All right, that's cool. And, you know, I just take notes, and I try to learn, and I try to be hands-on and do things myself as much as I can, too, just to see if I can and learn and try to get used to the process because it's art to me as well. I love watching people edit and shit like that and then I learn and then I take the ball and run with it and I you know I, that's how I am man I love to be hands on and I love to just do things and fucking learn so absolutely so what else you want to touch upon Tatness this week I don't know I don't have much else to say really no. um, I think we're going to shorten this show uh, just because there's so much going on and, again, there's not a lot to talk about because of being so wrapped up in the documentary filming and whatever. Things will go back to normal when it's done. And then all this COVID bullshit. Mm -hmm. So, like, you don't really get to go out and do anything worth talking about. No. Unfortunately so, not. you know, uh, lastly, the one thing I will say, I don't give a fuck who messages me or tries to convince me to do this shit. I'm going to put this out there right now for everybody. I refuse to resort to 
no matter how bored I get, if I get downtime or whatever the fuck, I will not watch that fucking bullshit on Netflix. How about the rednecks and the fucking... Tiger King? I don't give a fuck if it's Larry King, <laughs> Burger King, <laughs> fucking... Oh my gosh. Don King. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> It's not happening. Oh, come on, man. No. But yet you... I'm good. I mean, come on. I mean, I haven't seen it either, but I'd like to see it. I mean... Not I, sir. Just haven't had the time, but it's just what I hear. I'm like, do people... People really live like this? Because it kind of reminds me of Trailer Park Boys. Let's be honest here. Not doing it. And at least, you know, that's fictional. And, yeah, you just flat out said you're not doing it. No. Yeah, you hit me up with, you know, who did this? Carol Baskin. The memes are dope. They're funny. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but they're not going to peer pressure me into watching this horse shit. I'm going to make you watch I'm it. I'm not doing it. Not happening. Yeah. I will go to my grave saying I never watched that horse shit. Take that. It's really just out of spite now, too. <laughs> because, okay, so everybody tell him not to watch Tiger King, and he will maybe watch it. Because no, he won't. You'll just get your wish. I won't watch it. So I, I put my foot down. Damn it. Fuck you, Netflix. <clears throat> you cancel everything I love, so now you want to peddle this shit like it's the greatest thing ever. I see it's like number one in Canada and bullshit, and I'm like, cool, you can shove it up your ass, because I'm not watching it. Fuck it. Not happening. Out of spite. That's where I stand. <laughs> well, maybe I'll check it out, but we'll see. I mean, don't I don't do know. It. Don't do it. You're trying to help me here, eh? You need an intervention. Do I now? Yes. I'm going to step in and be like, don't do it. You'll thank me later. I'm sure I maybe will, but maybe, you know, after a few drinks or whatever, maybe I'll be like, oh, this isn't so bad. And then I'm like, oh, I immediately regret this decision. If you have to drink to enjoy watching something, what does that tell you? It's shit. Right? Don't do it. I was going to say, too, it sucks, like, you know, with this covid shit like all the um the movies getting delayed releases because i know one movie i'm really looking forward to and most definitely you is halloween kills i mean okay it's until we have until october so don't fuck up everyone and that's one i want to see in theaters i'm really like bugging out over that one just because i'm like i don't want to watch that on a fucking streaming site i don't want to fucking see that in the theater you yeah fucks. i don't i wouldn't want to watch it on a tv like, delay it if you have to but don't fucking just skip the theater on that one well i know a lot of like film companies and that have just done direct streaming to your home and it's like just oh, I... just say what it is it kind of just discredits the whole production and makes it seem like i got a dope surround sound system and a good tv and all that shit nice and big and whatever but it's not I, the same i still want to see it in a the theater it's just the it's the environment it is and to say you know hey i saw this movie in theaters and with that. other people and shit and it just kind of feels like you know and it's like i don't know it seems more organic like yeah it's just see something in theaters because the reaction's different in that it feels more traditional Mm-hmm. i mean I'm not usually one to go to the movies, but if something's really good, it's like, hell, I'll go. It's just nice to break the monotony of being at home. Yeah, I get it. You can, like, pause it, go take a piss, go get your food or whatever, yeah, whatnot. I really want them to re-release in the theater, Nightmare on Elm Street, because I was a year old when it came out, so there's no way I was going to see it in the theater. And I didn't fucking exist, so... <laughs> I would love to see it in the theater. Like, don't remaster it or anything. Just leave it that grimy, old, like... You know, 84 look, and I just, I, I need to see that on a huge screen. I'll fucking get a projector or whatever. I'll do it at home. <laughs> I don't care. You know, when people, they do re-release stuff, they always have to digitally remaster it and that. But it's, it's not the same feel. No, it's not. It needs to have that, like, grimy-ass, you know, like, film look to it, I think. It takes away its charm when you try to polish it too much. Make it to you, Hollywood, I think. Yeah, you because, know? let's face it, like, you know, a lot of appeal of, like, horror movies especially older ones is the grittiness and the campiness yeah, that's what it is right it's like i, I compare it to like li i want to listen to nirvana on vinyl i feel like that was how it was intended to sound not on a polished cd i think it just was intended for that kind of uh you know grimy sound and i think on vinyl with all the crackling and shit it would sound super fucking like how it was intended to sound yeah i have to agree and i mean 
Hell, I had, uh, I love Friday the 13th, y'all know this, um, I had the, um, VHS tapes, and I bought the Blu-ray set, and it's just, the feeling, it's so different in that, yeah, it's, it's like, so polished, isn't it? It's not the same, it doesn't have the same effect, especially, no. say you watch that shit, and you're going camping, and it's like, oh my fuck, like, what if Jason's outside my damn door? Yeah, I, I find when they polish it too much, and they try to clean it up a little too much, it just looks too Hollywood, and it's just like, uh, it's, it doesn't have the same no, charm and you, appeal. You want it to look like it was filmed on a fucking camcorder, like it's real. And I think with horror, that's the benefit. And, and I've touched on this before. This is why you will never see horror movies get Oscars and shit like that. Because the Oscars, let's be real, it's a business. They're in bed with all the fucking production companies and things like that. You know, when it comes to great horror, any fucking Johnny camcorder can fucking take a little handheld, go make something look super real, terrify the shit out of people, and you don't need that big industry budget. So there's no money in it for them. So the Oscars and shit won't even consider anything like that. They'll tell you it's because of the violence and all that bullshit. Come on. Mm Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, I say any, like, camcorder movies, two come to mind. Well, maybe... Yeah, two I can think of, which is Blair Witch Project, which, you know, is probably the most famous uh, camcorder uh, horror movie. And uh, The Gallows. You ever see The Gallows? No, I haven't. Um, I've seen, like, the um, trailer or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe bits and pieces or whatever. But no, I haven't seen it. I mean, some of it was good. I didn't care for The Gallows, but Blair Witch, I know it has its moments. I know... It was a hu- it was mocked a lot in pop culture and that's like oh I love know. the concept though yeah I mean everyone makes fun of the scene where the girl I think her name was Heather shoves you know the camera up her nose and all that it was it was mocked in that but I, I liked it it was a good concept it was like a documentary horror film I don't get why that's funny to people it's like if this was legit and you're in a serious situation like that like as if she's worried about how she appears on camera mm-hmm. she's not. No, that's about, the last thing when you know, you're going like, to die. Yeah, your possibly. vanity is not exactly your top priority when you're potentially going to be killed by some fucking thing that you didn't think exists. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get why people nitpick so much. I think the whole found footage concept is actually brilliant. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really cool. It was very fucking interesting. It was new. I, I saw Blair Witch 2, and I was like, this is totally different. It's Hollywood. It's fucking, you know, yeah. it's not found footage type style or anything. But it's still pretty cool, I, I think. I saw it on TV one one year, and I thought it had its moments where it was kind of trippy. And I was like, oh, that's fucked up. That's weird. Um, I would say another film that used that effectively, it wasn't the whole film. It was like bits and pieces was the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I really liked the fi- found film footage. They had it at the beginning, and I think maybe yeah it was near the end and it was really effective at telling the story because basically they said this is the story of the hewitt family blah 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 here's the footage shows a movie and then it goes to that and kind of closes it off like one of those true crime uh tv shows that was really effective i really enjoyed that never seen it it's good i've never even seen the original no way no i well we all know that you're not really big into um the gore fest the gore fest I mean, yeah uh, no. yes Let's face it, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's a lot of, it's based on gore and shock values. Yeah, I don't like it. I mean... Not for me. Sorry. No. Sorry if that upsets anybody, but it's just not my thing. I mean, hey, each their own, right? So... I like more, like, the psychological shit. Yeah. Um, like, Nightmare on Elm Street, I think, is very psychological, more so than gore fest. Mm-hmm. And anything that is gory is over the top, you know what I mean? Um, I remember my ex, it was really funny... Ah, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. The uh, puppet. Ugh. She would always turn her head and be like, let me know when it's done. Because just the fucking tendons and shit. She was like, no. Nah. No, not about it. Don't want to see it. It's gross. And I was like, I don't like gore, but to me that was funny. It was creative. It was cool. And I was like, oh, that's gnarly. But then here's where I get weird now. Um, the girl that slits her fucking wrist in the beginning, that grosses me out. Um, when they show that it was actually her own doing, oh, it just weirds me out. I'm like, no, that's that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. I don't. Oh, there's something weird about wrist slitting that just really grosses me. The fuck or out. yeah, any kind of slitting. You said even like throats, wrists, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get really weird about that. But then this fucking poor bastard, because it's invisible, you don't see the way it's done. 
it didn't bother me for some reason. But if I see the fucking razor blade and I put two and two together in my mind, I'm like, oh, nah. It gives me the fucking, you know, mm. lilies, bro. <laughs> that's I guess, so strange like that. Well, that's like when I see people get needles in movies and whatnot. And then it's like, hell, I do this for a living. I can't have no problem giving them. Right. But it's like when I watch them on film or even on myself, I'm like, no. No. Right. Like when I got into tattooing, like people are like, do you do piercings too? I'm like, no, I could get piercings all day. I've had so many, <laughs> but I'll never pierce someone else. There's no fucking way. I, I can't do it. Well, it's different, I guess, because it's, it's passing through the yeah, whole flesh. Literally to me, that's the difference in, in needles besides obviously the thickness and it's the fact you're going right through. Mm-hmm. That it just fucks me up. And I'm like, nah, I can't hurt people like that. Oh, especially imagine if they asked you to pierce their tongue or someone but, below yeah, the there's belt. Th- there's things, though, where, like, you know, the eyebrow people don't get. If you hit a nerve there, it paralyzes the whole side of the face. Like, that's a that's why you take the flashlight and you check for the, you know, the spot and make sure you got a clearance and whatever. Like, I had my eyebrow done for fucking so many years that um, you, you, you fucking one wrong move, man. They don't recover from that. It's almost like Bell's palsy. You know what Eesh. I mean? Where half your face just goes numb. Yeah, it's and a- paralyzed, and it's not a good look. It's uh, you know, as a piercer, that's a fucking that's a career ruiner. And I just never liked the idea of risking somebody. You know, anyone, any pro can have a bad day and just kind of think that they nailed the right spot and didn't. <clears throat> Accidents happen, right? There's always room for human error, and I just I wasn't about it. So. Um, but I get really weird with shit like that. It's kind of funny. Um, I, I'm someone that fights for a living. You know what I mean? Like, I beat the shit out of people for a fucking career. But then I see fake violence in a movie, and I'm like, oh, it's too much. <laughs> like, if it's, like, super gory. Mm-hmm. <coughs> the other thing is, like, the bones breaking through the skin. is fucking... Ugh! No! Stop it! Movies don't need that shit. <laughs> so gross. No. No, oh god. I'm good without that. Yeah. I, I don't like it. I can't. <laughs> like, it's funny when you're going back to the topic of piercings. I, like, actually remember being in high school and people were like, oh, I used a kilt pin because we, I went to a Catholic school, so we had uniforms and it was like the pin, the kilt pin, because the girls had kilts. Guy told me, oh yeah, I pierced under my, you know, under the tongue, the web area with the kilt pin. And I'm like, I pierced my own eyebrow back in like 99 with a fucking safety pin and it was a terrible idea because I got infected but whatever don't do uh, that sir no I know I was stupid like, yeah. I didn't know at the time that you know there was that nerve that you could hit and whatever and you could like paralyze your whole fucking face mm-hmm. um, it wasn't as deep as it should have been anyway so oh, but yeah young is stupid you do dumb shit oh. you want to save a few bucks well yeah I get it I ultimately <laughs> got it done for like 10 bucks though by my buddy that uh Allegedly knew what he was doing. Hey, it he did a looked, phenomenal job. It yeah, lasted for sure. forever, but oh, for sure. But it's funny because it's like you hear. I think the most common sight that people self pierce is like earrings and that. Mm-hmm. Especially, I think I don't. know, I think this did happen to me because I have like three earring holes and that, and one here. But anyways, um, I took it out for a couple days. You know, some people do that to let it breathe and that, give it a bit of a break, especially if it's irritated, right? And it was like. I had trouble getting the earring back in. And I'm like, and I pushed it through. So I think I technically re-pierced it in a way. Cause it was I've like, done that once with my cartilage. Eesh. Yeah, I had to push it through. And, like, you could feel the, the fucking... The bump? Uh, the, the bump. And, like, I had to press on either side of it. And just push the jewelry through. Yeah, I tried to get my daughter's mom to do it. She's like, there's no fucking way. That's gross. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll do it. And I, like, pushed until I saw, like, this blood spatter on the mirror. And I'm like... I think I got it. <laughs> yeah, it's gnarly. It's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> I did it. But don't show me that fake gore shit. <laughs> That's where I draw my line. Yeah, this man will re-pierce his ear. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, someone else getting hurt, fake fucking blood and gore and all that gross shit. I don't know, I'm hit or miss. <laughs> Sometimes the damnedest things don't bother me. Well, I'll laugh at it. And I'll be like, oh, that's fucked up. Like, saw, what was it, seven? Not Chester was How in? many are, are there now? The one that Chester was in. Can't remember, but anyway. And, like, he had to tear the flesh off his back and shit because it was glued to the car seat. And to reach the fucking throttle to, like, stop the car from, it was on a timer. And, like, 
uh, or some such shit where like it was revving like faster and faster and uh, if it came off the blocks that it was on it was gonna like crush the person in front of it so you had to like make a choice right tear your own flesh off your back to stop it or and let save the their life and he does it but he does it just the cunt hair too late so they both die idiot <laughs> but you see the flesh being pulled it's like a glue trap you know what I'm saying like it looked like one of those glue traps that, you know, you use for mice or whatever, or bugs. And it was yeah. just seeing the flesh coming off his back, and he's, like, in pain. And for some reason to me, that was so over the top, it was fucking hysterically funny. It was disturbing, but it was funny because of how disturbing it was. Oh and God. that didn't bother me. But show me, you know, where the little wrist slit thing... Nightmare on Elm Street, where it's like kind of implied she did it herself, and I get like the willies about that, and I, I'm just like, oh come on, man, <laughs> and I'm like, why did you guys have to do me like that? <laughs> well, that's about it. In Nightmare on Elm Street, there's nothing in any of the movies that really grosses me out. Otherwise, it's just that one kind of, it's I don't know, it's more of an uncomfortable thing, where I'm like, I could have done without that. Yeah. I really wish you guys would have fucking just, just not cut that out. Yeah. Well. Eh. It's just the way they went about it, where I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, that weirds me out. And then, of course, I think about it too much, because that's what I do. And then it just fucks me up more. And I'm like, stop it. <laughs> Don't even think about it anymore. It's dumb. But that's what I do. Um, horror movies like that are really fucking weird, because I'm hit or miss. Sometimes the damnedest things will weird me out, and I'll be like, oh, that's gnarly. I can't watch that. And then there'll be things where you're like, Really? So you're good with that, but this is where you draw the line. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's just how I am. I don't know. It hits the brain a certain way. That's I guess me. so. I don't know. I guess that goes for anyone. Everyone has their thing they don't like. To me, the... Oh, eyes. Yeah, you Eyeballs. Eyes. Anything with eyeballs. So I got you to watch Fuck. You Know Evil. I was not happy. <laughs> it's a good movie, but that part, you're like, oh, don't watch it. I'm like, no. Fluck it out the eyes. No, don't Still. do that. No, it's just. See No Evil 2 was even better, and they kind of veered off away from the whole eye fetish. Thank God. It was just fucking kill, but. Yeah, it's just anything with the eyes. Like, you watch the eyes and like, and all that. It's like, no, 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 thank you. Right. It's, uh, for me, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Hey, so it's like, you know... It's the, so different. It is. It's like, for you, it's the bones. And I'm like, <laughs> look at that. And then, But they, they put one in there, in the first one, the chick's fucking wrist bone. Her hand hits the fucking ground because she falls from a certain height but stops just in time. But her hand hits the ground and it busts her fucking wrist bone out through the skin. Just It's like a quick flash of it. And then I was like, Ugh. I read the book first and they got into real detail about how the stray hungry dogs came and smelled the blood and they just started to chew at the bone and rip her fucking apart and they went into like heavy detail that they just shredded her while she was alive hanging there defenseless and I was like that's so gnarly so I thought the movie was going to be super graphic because they tried to sell it where they were showing like trailer uh, their trailer was basically showing you know fan reactions to the uh the screening of it and they're like uh, and shit and like freaking out and uh so i thought oh it's gonna be so gory based on the book and i bought it anyway and i watched it and i was like this isn't fucking terrible at all like you guys overhyped it honestly doesn't everyone do that they always like I, I was relieved though i wasn't even mad i was like this is actually a pretty solid flick it's just I was I was uncomfortable going into it because I'm like I don't want to vomit from this crap or be traumatized. You know, there's some movies that are just too fucked up. I'll never watch Hostel for that reason. I've seen it a couple times. I don't get why people enjoy basically you know, torture porn. Yeah, right. the The idea of people suffering terribly. You know what I'm saying? It's just one thing. You know, a kill is a kill. It's a horror movie. But to, like, get off on fucking watching people being tortured and shit is just too dark for me, man. It's not for me. Call me whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. It's yeah. just not for me. I, to me, it's dark, and it's just, I don't know. I don't get nothing good out of it. It's not entertaining to me. No. Not to sound like a fucking prude or whatever, like, to each their own. If you're into it, all the power to you. Um, but for me, it's just, that's where I draw my line. 
where it's like, nah, it's a little too weird. The idea of getting off on that kind of shit, you know, like Saw, for me, has its moments mm -hmm. where it's like, who fucking thinks of this shit? I am concerned for their mental health. But at the same time, the story of it all was so solid mm -hmm. that it's like, okay, it's like that makes it, up for it. That's right? actually really cool. You know, the idea of, like, you're a dying fucking individual and you're so disgusted with how people take their lives for granted that you want to kind of put things in perspective for them. It's not that you're out to kill them, necessarily. You kind of are hoping that they figure it out, you know what I mean? And uh, kind of make some sacrifices because they do appreciate their lives. And I thought, that's so twisted. It's such a god complex, honestly. That it's actually kind of interesting. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I thought it's pretty creative. Personally, yeah, I think so. It's not just senseless violence. I, I really don't feel like they needed like thirty-seven of the fucking movies. Yeah, I kind of like. I think the first one was pretty dope. I like the second one too, but I really don't feel like they needed a whole slew of them. Yeah. Like, Didn't they do a Saw 3D for crying out loud? Oh, maybe. Yeah, they did, and I'm like this whole 3D movie thing. It's just. I don't want to watch someone's head get cut off and right in my face. No, thank you. Yeah, 3D, though. Friday the 13th 3D is dope. Oh, yeah, part three. Yeah, <laughs> With I the did. old school. Like, it was really good. I had the DVD box that I was saying. Not DVD, Blu-ray box yeah, yeah, set. Yeah, and it yeah. came with the little glasses <laughs> and that. I of course, the, I can't fucking see it anyways. I had a DVD version back in the day when I was poor. And uh, I had, um, yeah, like before I, you know, I don't knew who the fuck I was. I didn't do shit. <laughs> um, I had the the regular ass DVD. Someone, a friend, got me that uh, and another one for Christmas, and it came with the little three D glasses that were designed to look like Jason's mask. Yeah, that's what these ones look like too. And like, holy fuck, did it work! I remember chilling watching it, and when the the fucking woman was adjusting her antenna for the TV, mm -hmm. I was like, oh. yeah. it was coming right at my eye, and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, it's a movie, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> or what else the yo-yo part I remember that and yeah, it's yeah like it hits the broad like yeah that was cool man and then the eyeball it was it was good that I mean you really could cool. still see it on the actual film but reason why I say I can't see is I have vision problems and of course my eyes all fucked up so of course fuck me I guess I can't watch it in 3D uh, I'm really excited about the new VR type games I want to play Resident Evil in VR 7 because it's that shit's dark uh, isn't that the one where... Yeah, yeah, people know my experience with that one. I was way too high. I own it. And I was way too high when I played it the first time. And it was really intense. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm too high for this shit. It feels too real. Mm -hmm. And so you're I'm, like, why is this bitch chasing me with a chainsaw? I, this is why you don't fucking pick bitches up on Tinder, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut your hand off and put a screwdriver through it first and all that crazy shit. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I didn't... Like, I was like, I'm way too high. This feels too real. So now, of course, the only natural thing to do is play it in fucking VR. That's just... Because that's not going to make it feel too real. I think it'll make it worse. As long as I'm not high, I guess I'll be fine. <laughs> but uh, I hear I hear the new Resident Evil maybe VR. Like, solely. Or at least fully offered in VR mode. Oof. And uh, as well as other games that I think will be super cool. I'm fascinated by VR. I never fucked with it yet, but I want to. I haven't either, but that so, does sound really I cool. Do wanna ex I, I do really want to explore that a little bit. I mean, um, I'll probably be scared shitless. It'll be like the first time I played Resident Evil where... I think I may have told the story where I rented it for GameCube when Blockbuster was still around. And... I put it in, I'm in the first scene, you know, where you're going down the hill, the corridor, I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad, and then that zombie turns around, I'm like, nope, fuck this, that shut was, it off, and I was done with it. I played that shit in late 96, I believe it was, when it first came out for mm -hmm. uh, PS1. Yeah. And I remember playing that with a friend of mine, and when we first got to that part, the first zombie you come across, and he turns around, looks at you, and then it's like, game on, bitch. Where he gets up and it's like, now you're playing. And then, yeah. I never felt a fucking sense of urgency in my life. And I wasn't even the one playing. 
and I, I knew then I love this game. I was like, yeah, we're I, doing this. Yeah, I think that's what really got me, just being jump scared and that. And I was like 11, so I was like, Ugh. It's not, yeah, it's, it's a mixture of jump scare, but it's also the urgency feeling that mm-hmm. you have of like, I need to fucking haul ass and get out of here. Or and of deal course, with him. that's when you're still learning the controls. So it's like, oh, this is not going to be easy. Yeah, and you don't want to waste all your ammo on him. Cause that's why if you use Jill, there's a secret. Mm. Just go back through the door, mm-hmm. and your homeboy will shoot him for you. Oh, so nice. you save a couple bullets. Oh, that's cool. I just avoided the fucker. You use Chris, you're on your own. Oh, yeah, fuck Chris, I guess. Yeah, they're, they're like, use your ammo. Be a man. So. Dicks. I know, right? That's favoritism. Mm-hmm. Just because she has tits. It's like, oh, yeah, let's save her. Right? You know, she's so badass. She doesn't need saving. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, GameCube, the remaster. I'm like, nope, not having any part of that. It looks so good, too. I, I love the remaster for Xbox One. I've been playing the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. I beat it already. And um, it's so well done. Like, the skin. I need two, though. i got to buy two. Mm-hmm. Because the remaster looks so damn good. And I'm like, fuck, why don't I own this yet? What's wrong with me? So that has to happen. Fuck it up. And I know. And I've been neglecting it, so. Um, but I'm still hooked on 5. I'm so in love with it. It's got the replay value of a motherfucker. Just because I like the time trial stuff. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. I know people get salty. Like, it's not a real fucking Resident Evil game. Shut up. I like it. We, we I enjoy it. We get we together and we play that shit, and it's a lot of fun. Don't judge me because I like it. I like uh, it. Six, I think, got a little too weird for me, and I was like, it doesn't feel like a fucking res game anymore. Mm-hmm. I owned it. Yeah, and I didn't love it. Um, I, I love the multiplayer though. You think people got salty because the zombies like were smarter and faster? Yeah, but... like military zombies with all the fucking weapons, machine guns, and shit. I know five had that too, but six just really got fucking overboard with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lost a little bit of interest there myself, yeah. but the story was really cool because mm-hmm. you had the characters from all the old games kind of running into each other for the first time. Yeah. And that made it really interesting. But overall, I'm not sure it saved it. Um, in the end, I think it just felt like its own thing, like a shooter type mm-hmm. with familiar characters, essentially. Basically. But there was elements of the original Resident Evil games. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... You know, as far as video games and shit goes, uh, speaking of which, I, I just want to, before I wrap this bitch up, talk about, um, if this goes well, and there's time, I would like to get into using my Twitch channel for the first time, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, in case you didn't know, I do have one. Yeah, the Tatnus Twitch channel, because uh, I love video games, and I do want to play some shit, and have fun with it. And I think it might be, you know, a little extra bonus for some of you fans and shit. So, I think it might be cool. I think so. It'll be different for sure because we've never really gone into that on the show. I mean, hell, we're doing the first video podcast format and it's really neat. I want to do some, like, retro stuff. Like, I want to play Perfect Dark a lot. Mm-hmm. And maybe even go back to Goldeneye a little bit. I feel it's redundant at this point, because mm-hmm. I feel like Perfect Dark was the perfected version of GoldenEye. Yeah, basically, it took what was great about GoldenEye and made and it made better. better. Yeah. yeah. So, I kind of want to get into that a little bit and play that, cause just for old time's sake, for, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's great for you that are kind of younger and you don't really know what it is, you'll fall in love with it. And now with emulators and things like that. You can actually go and play it. You don't need an N64. You can go play it on your PC. It is actually available on Xbox One on the store. It's yeah, a remaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what it. that's what you got. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's great new graphics. Yeah, and, I forgot about that. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, let's face it, the N64 it's great, and that older system sometimes it's like mm, the graphics don't hold up. Yeah, and like on your PC it can slow things. Oh god, down. it's It'd very laggy. laggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, unless you have it for. I forgot I had the the Xbox One version but yeah it's really cool mm-hmm. it, it's actually a good time and i highly recommend it so have fun with it man and uh check it out for sure and i'll let you know when the twitch channel works oh for sure i mean we got a few spots to anchor out i have a podcast yep this is a podcast as you can see that's my stripies <laughs> her name is bandit and she wants to be on the show apparently 
And uh, this is what happens when you film and, you know, you do a show at the home studio. You get a cat all up in your grill, Mm -hmm. all up in your Kool-Aid. So shit happens. What are you going to do? For sure. What can you do? (laughs) Anyways, I think she's telling me to wrap this bitch up. I think so. She's taking over today. Yep, she is. Oh, wait. What? Oh, okay. She's gone. (laughs) Anyways. Uh, I'll, I'll inform you guys when I'm going to take off with the Twitch channel. When things kind of calm down a little bit and I get it all figured out, because I'm, like, I'm honestly as IT-wise, I'm literally technologically as inclined as a fucking Mennonite. So, That's why I'm here. it's not pretty. Mm-hmm. But I learn pretty quick. He does. But, he does. uh... I'm kind of fucking dumb as a box of rocks when it comes to that. Not going to lie. So, don't expect miracles from me, man. Give me... Just be patient. Mm -hmm. Give me time. You know? I'll figure it out. Sooner or later. Okay. And I'll yell at it like an old man that's confused and frightened. What isn't this working? (laughs) I don't understand stuff. I don't understand stuff, and it's terrifying. You want some pudding cups? I do. (laughs) <laughs> I'll make sure to crush your meds in there. Yeah, I need meds. Apparently, they teach me IT stuff. Apparently. I don't know. <laughs> Anything's possible these days. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Anyways, man. Thanks for checking us out. And the first fucking video. It was probably terrible. But. Hey, know. I enjoyed it. I'm hoping you guys all enjoy it, too. I hope so. If not, you can all go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Just kidding, I love you. Alright, we'll I'm see. Mad. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, man. Take care and fucking mm-hmm. thanks again for everything.